Well, let's talk about what we've been talking about for the last three days now, and this seems to be a break once again, a reigniting of the climate wars. We heard Peter Dutton in his media conference about half an hour ago saying that he is 100% committed to the Paris Agreement and he would not be pulling out of it even if he did win at the next election. I want to bring in now independent MP Allegra Spender. Allegra, thanks so much. Um, this is obviously really uh, key for you because your platform at the last election, having won the seat of Wentworth, was uh, the number one issue was climate change. Uh, Peter Dutton is essentially pointing out that Labor's not going to meet its own targets for 2030, so we need to be realistic. Do you accept what he is saying? Look, no, I don't. I think Peter Dutton is, you know, frankly, at this stage, worse than Tony Abbott in relation to climate. Right. And why I'm concerned about this, well, because at least Tony Abbott had the honesty of saying, well, this is going to be the climate targets I'm going to take to the electorate, um, and this is what we're going to do. Peter Dutton won't commit to that. And in terms of what Dutton has said, he said, you know, the government's not going to hit 43%, so therefore, you know, we should, you know, should abandon it. Let's be honest, the government's own, the modelling from the department has suggested mm -hmm. we're on track for 42% which is pretty close to 43%. We have six years to hit 20, to, to hit these targets. Now, I think we need to do more to make sure we're on track and actually hit 43%. You know, but this is not the time to abandon the, the targets and say, you know what, yeah. we're not interested. This is a time to actually get the policies in place and say, what's working, what's sure. not, let's deliver. And frankly, the coalition yeah. has voted against every substantial piece of climate legislation in the parliament to date, including those backed by the business community. So for me, this is Peter Dutton not being credible that he actually wants to make significant changes and significant reductions in our emissions. You're talking about the emissions reduction target. I'm also focusing on the renewable energy uh, target of 82% uh, by 2030. That is way off. Uh, we're talking about, you know, that at 42% at the moment. So don't you need to look at the gap between those two targets? We're bringing emissions down. We promised, you know, that the target to get renewables up is just nowhere near it. So how are we, you know, that that's to me says, OK, uh, we're getting emissions down, renewables aren't doing it, uh, and aren't we kind of pulling the wool over the Australian people's eyes by saying, well, we've got these target, but actually renewables aren't going to do it, so it's going to have to be... Base load. Isn't there just kind of a, an honest to you degree in all of this? Look, I think the, the the target that really matters is actually how much carbon is going into the atmosphere. Well, not really, you know, Allegra, because I mean, if, you, if the renewables aren't where they need to be in 2030, I mean, that tells, doesn't that tell us that something else is going to have to fill that gap uh, and it's going to be really expensive? No, I think the, the target that matters is, I think, the 2030 target of total emissions and the renewables feeds into that. And so, you know, we aren't, I agree, we're not building renewables as fast as we need to. And so the job is then is to build them faster um, so that we can put renewables into the system because we know, frankly, that the cheapest form of new energy, you know, the, when the coal plants and everything close down in the next 10 years, many of them are at the end sure. of life, the cheapest form of new energy is firmed renewables. That's where we need to go. That is the cheapest form for our families and mm. our businesses. And so we need to really deliver on that. And that's got to be, should be the 100% focus of the community. But instead, you know, I'd say that Dutton and the, you know, the party are undermining, you yeah. know, that, that move to renewables. And we need to make that change. Look, sure, so if, if you accept that, yeah, and I do accept that, so I'm with you on yeah. that, but but also, you know, what is not being talked about is a really hard bit, and that is the perhaps 10 or 20% that wind and solar cannot cover uh, because they're in, sure. intermittent nature, batteries aren't up to speed, green hydrogen is not economically viable at the moment. So when are we going to talk about that 10 to 20%? Because that's, that's the, the glue uh, you can't just um, ignore that because otherwise the whole mm. energy system collapse doesn't collapses, doesn't it? And for me, this is why we're talking about a transition. Not you know, I've never been one of those people. You know, turn them off no. tomorrow. You know, let's let's go ahead. I'm saying this is a transition. Absolutely. Mm. You know, we we do have states. You know, South Australia. Tasmania and the ACT that are already, you know, at meeting that 80% renewables. But I'm not saying get to 100% um, no. by 2030 because, frankly, we don't. But they're also have relying on base load power from the other East Coast markets in other states as well. 
Look, there, there's a combination piece. We have to make this work together. It is a transition. It's not easy. It's not simple. And frankly, you know, it'd be great if we had started 15 years ago, but we haven't. You know, but we are making progress. And in sense of, yeah. in in terms of the renewables, we're now just under 40% renewables across the east coast grid, mm. and that is a really positive step. So we're making progress. We need to stay the course. We need to accept that this isn't a simple transition, yeah. but it is the right transition for our kids, and it, it is the transition that we as a country can make.